If you like the story you can support the author on Patreon link is in the description. Chapter 50 Chapter 50 Reason Behind His Actions We will become the Ninja Academy in Kanaha. Silence dropped in the place as both of them looked at him with a weird look in their eyes. Tsukimi sweat dropped under their piercing eyes. What are you not telling us? Matatabi asked in suspicion. Her eyes narrowed trying to see through him but Tsukimi has been around for a long time before they could even be born. What do you mean? Tsukimi asked back with a polite smile, there was not a change in expressions on his face. Don't give me that. I know how much you hate humans, so why would you suddenly want to go and join a village of ninjas if nothing else? Matatabi exclaimed, still looking at him with similar expressions. Tell us Tsukimi, what is it that you want to do there? Kokuo added after Matatabi finished speaking, she knew that there must be a reason for his actions and decided for him to explain himself. Sighing, Tsukimi decided to explain to them a little about his reason to go there. Sigh there is a change in the future. You remember when I went to visit that tadpole, he told me that he saw something in the dream shifting the future and it was becoming uncertain. His words shocked both of the girls, Matatabi narrowed her eyes and asked again. The reason for this change is in that village? Even if that's the case, what does that have to do with us? There is nothing except danger to our lives that can make you join in such an event. Does this affect us? Kokuo nodded and looked at him with a serious look in her cute pearl-like eyes. Indeed Kanaha is the center of this change, there will be many things that were supposed to happen, yet will not take place. These changes can be anything and I cannot keep on using my ability to keep a track of them. Tsukimi replied while looking in their eyes. Do you know what will happen? Kokuo asked this time. We will fight. No no we won't have to fight, we will be staying there while studying in the academy for a short time. Tsukimi looked at her while adding. There will be just swatting flies, no fighting. His words brought a slight grin to her face which was only visible to Tsukimi. He could easily understand what was going on inside her mind. She has a natural emotionless face, she expresses her feelings in her own way. Tsukimi was the only one who could understand what she was feeling even when everyone else was clueless about it. Why do you want to join the academy? We can also live as civilians. So what's the reason behind that? Matatabi wasn't done with her questions and asked again. Well, that's the other reason for me to go there, I will be looking for a suitable host to nurture. Tsukimi's declaration caught them off guard. It didn't take long before their aura turned cold and two pairs of empty eyes locked on him. A girl. Hearing the chilling cold voice, Tsukimi did not get scared, instead he chuckled and patted their head. Half of their momentum disappeared then and there but they still did not back down completely. My dear little wives, yes it will be a girl. I won't ever live inside a male. Gosh that sounds even disgusting to say. His facial expressions turned to that of disgust when he spoke the last line. Don't worry though, it definitely won't be someone random. Tsukimi's words caused them to sigh. Even though they had some complaints about it they decided to leave it to the future thinking. Not like he would find a perfect candidate right away. They knew how picky their brother was when he had to choose something significant and currently they were talking about someone that will be significant to the whole family. This thought eased their minds even more and they nodded readily. If Tsukimi knew what was going on in their mind, he would chuckle in amusement. Now, no need to think much, you can think of it as a date for the three of us Tsukimi's words caught their attention. He had already told them about dating and everything. Their eyes shined, they looked at each other and sparks flew towards each other as they started a different fight. Why does she have to come, can't it be just the two of us? Both of them had similar thoughts as they looked at each other with cold eyes. Waving his hands Tsukimi dispersed their auras making them turn towards him. We will be living there for a long time, so we can take turns to go on a date. Not even a second before his other words could even land in their mind, they stopped listening. Their mind was focused on something entirely different. Just the two of us hee <laughs> hee. Prepare during this time, we won't know what exactly we will encounter so be ready for everything. Tsukimi rolled his eyes seeing the lost look in their eyes, it seemed that they had already drifted in their own world hearing his world. He just walked out of the room leaving them to their fantasies. What kind of change is it that can affect the ninja world to this extent? Tsukimi thought about using his skill but sighed because he couldn't see that far in the future. It was evident that an anomaly would appear that could change the future. Chapter 51, Chapter 51, Their Children Just like that 50 years went by in a flash for the tailed beast it was not much of a long period of time. They just felt like a few days passed as they kept on working at their pace. 
Today was a special day for Tsukimi's family, they gathered in the temple hall having a meeting recently. Tsukimi stood in the middle and looked at all of his little siblings with warm eyes. Everyone was in their beast forms recently. Today is the day we will leave for Kanaha. He had already told the rest that they will be leaving to stay among the humans for a while. While they had some questions about his actions they did not question him. To them, every action he takes has a reason behind them. Despite them not asking, Tsukimi still explained to them and they also wanted to accompany him but he refused. He warned them it won't be any time soon and even told them to travel across the world if they want. Even though they were a little dissatisfied they decided to comply, their displeasure disappeared when Tsukimi told them he could always call them by his side if he needed them. Hearing them everyone was elated and accepted his proposal. You should remember what I told you, you can go and travel if you want. We will be living in Kanaha for a long time. Maybe we can even meet before we intend to. Tsukimi announced seeing their gloomy faces. Hearing his words their mood turned a little better and Tsukimi continued to speak. I have already placed marks on you, if you face any grave danger activate them. I will be there. His solemn voice left no room for rejection. Everyone nodded in agreement. It's about time. We should leave. As the meeting came to an end everyone left in different directions. They all chose to roam around the world in their human appearance. Maybe it was their nature that they could not love in one place for a long time. Tsukimi sighed looking at their disappearing backs. He realized that he was the anchor that made them stay in one place or they would have long separated just like in the anime. Even though they were closer to each other, it was not to the point their relationship was with him. Both Kokuo and Matatabi, who stayed behind along with him, could feel his emotions from their soul link and walked towards him. Appearing beside him they intervened their tails with him to show that they were still there with him. They could feel a little lonely aura around him. What happened brother? Kokuo asked with concern edged on her face. Tsukimi sighed and shook his head, discarding those thoughts. Nothing. While saying those words, his body glowed and his height started to become shorter and shorter. Both of the girls became puzzled seeing his height decrease even further than his original height of human body. After a few seconds, his body stopped shrinking at the height of four feet. Kokuo and Matatabi were shocked to see their beloved brother turn into a cute little boy. His appearance was just like what they would imagine him as a kid. His hair was short golden with a mixture of silver hair hues among them. His fiery orange eyes were just like that of humans but they held deep mystery and wisdom hidden deep behind them. His tall chiseled body transformed into a short cute body of a child. He changed his clothes to match that of regular civilians. While Tsukimi was checking his body out he felt two burning gazes on him. He turned to see his wives looking at him with a heated gaze. Matatabi was even looking at her lips while pressing her legs against each other. She could feel her inside screaming at her to mate with him and have his kittens. Although Kokuo was doing a little better. Maybe not, there was a long drool on the corner of her lips and her empty eyes were trying to strip naked. Tsukimi raised his eyebrows seeing their reaction. He floated in the air towards them, their eyes seemed to be glued to his body scanning every inch of it. He slammed the back of their heads with his tails. Change your appearance too, Kokuo doesn't need it. They both came out of their stupor and licked their lips in unison. When Kokuo heard his last words she looked at him with hateful eyes but seeing his childish appearance it soon disappeared. Matatabi also turned into a little version of herself and her appearance stunned Tsukimi a little as well. It was like he was looking at his and Matatabi's daughter. Shaking his head he came out of his stupor and looked at Matatabi smirking at him as if thinking. Now you know. Rolling his eyes, Tsukimi walked towards them and kissed them on their cheeks. Fwaha. Smokes came out of their heads as they realized what he just did. Tsukimi shook his head and thought in amusement. What's with this reaction? You are getting embarrassed over this after being so fierce in bed. Well tried at least. Without causing any delay he took their hands and declared. Let's go. As soon as his words landed in their ears the three of them disappeared from the area, leaving only flying dust behind in the lonely area. Chapter 52, Chapter 52, Talk to Mikuabai. Let's go. The three of them vanished from the room, reappearing in the middle of the air. When they looked down they could see a large mass of land that was shrouded by forests and mountains. The land was occupied by ninjas claiming it to be the village of the Hidden Leaf. This was Matatabi and Kokuo's first time coming to Kanaha and they looked at the village with scanning eyes. Tsukimi scanned the whole village with his senses and spoke up. It seems Hashirama and Tobirama are dead, even most of their descendants are the same. Matatabi raised her eyebrow in response, 
she looked back at the village and sensed that there was not even a single noticeable level of chakra signature in the village. After they grew stronger in these years even cage level shinobi were worth nothing in their eyes. Kokuo looked at Tsukimi and asked, how will we enter the village? Do we have to hide? Tsukimi looked back at her and smirked. Without answering he looked down at the village where everyone was busy in their business. Suddenly his third eye opened and everything around him seemed to halt, his eye focused on the whole village as he mumbled. Genjutsu Rhine Sharingan. A pulse of invisible energy released from his eye enveloping the entire ninja village, everyone came to a halt for a few seconds before resuming their work like nothing happened. Even Saratobi Hiruzen, who was now the Hokage of the Leaf Village, did not find anything weird happening. Tsukimi's Rhine Sharingan closed and his forehead turned back to normal. Kokuo and Matatabi looked at him for an explanation of what he just did. Tsukimi said, I used Genjutsu on the entire village. Now they think we are orphans rescued by Senjos in the previous ninja war that just ended. Tobirama's student is taking care of our papers. Kokuo and Matatabi nodded in understanding, this was quite a reasonable background for them to enter the village. They won't be questioned about their origins all the time because they have been saved by someone from the Senjo clan. Where are we going to live then? Matatabi asked this time, she looked at the village and added, this village is not even big enough for it to be our courtyard. Her comment made Tsukimi chuckle, we will live in the Senjo family compound. They just lost many of their people in the war, so they have quite a few rooms to let them stay in. Their figures disappeared once again and reappeared in an empty courtyard. In front of them was a small house but it was enough for the three kids to live inside. Tsukimi walked forward and raised his hands. Seals after seals appeared surrounding the entire house before disappearing after a while. Let's go inside. Following Tsukimi they made their way inside the house through the main door. Matatabi and Kokuo's eyes widened in shock. As they entered the hall of the house it was already as big as the house itself. Seeing their amazing looks Tsukimi chimed in from behind, I used space laws to enlarge the small area of the house and some other seals to change all the furniture. One more thing, aside from us no one will even notice these changes. They nodded coming out of their stupor, even though they have seen him create miracles after miracles, he never ceases to amaze them. We should check the house first to get used to it and then we might have to meet Mito Uzumaki. Tsukimi stated and both the girls eagerly left to check out the entire house. Tsukimi already knew everything about the house when he selected it. This was the best house he could find in the ones that are available in the area. He walked towards the couch and closed his eyes to rest. Meanwhile in the main house of the Senju clan. In the open garden of the clan, an old woman sat on the ground looking at the sky with a slight frown on her face. She closed her eyes and appeared in a dark area. Her eyes wandered around the entire area scanning through every bit of it before landing on a huge gate of a familiar seal. This was the seal she created herself a long time ago to seal a demon. She made the seal so that she could use the power of the demon for herself but things didn't go as she planned. At first everything was going fine, she was able to tap into Kyuubai Chakra mode for up to seven tails without any problems. She was already on the level around her brother-in-law with that power and was feared in all the elemental nations. Everything went sideways when her husband died in a battle against that cursed friend of his that almost stole her husband from her. After he died from the injuries he received in the battle, Tobirama took over as the Hokage and it was not long before he died as well. It was said that he was ambushed by two brothers but to her it seemed like the position of the Hokage was cursed. It took two of the most important people in her life. Even her son also died along with his wife on a mission. When the student of her brother-in-law took over as Hokage, the number of people from the Senju clan that passed away in the front lines increased exponentially over the period of time. She would be blind if she did not notice who was behind it. Yet, she did not make a move, she was tired of all the battles and fighting. In return she turned blind eye to the death of her classmate. As long as her granddaughter and grandson were fine, she would be fine with everything. The time passed by and the number of the Senjo survivors decreased even further. Only a handful of people from her clan survived. One day she received news of her granddaughter being injured and her anger shot through the roof. It wasn't a major injury but it was her precious Tsunade who got injured, how could she be indifferent to it? Her chakra flared but something about it was different, she noticed she could not tap into the Kyuubai's chakra, it seemed the connection which siphoned the chakra from the tailed beast was blocked. This discovery panicked her to the core. She immediately confronted the fox and saw it leisurely lying behind the seal with its eyes closed. Before she could say anything the demon fox opened its eyes and sent her outside the seal. 
before leaving she saw that the eyes of the fox were filled with contempt and disgust when they landed on her. She trembled seeing those eyes judging her, she appeared back outside with a pale face. Ever since then she had been careful of not showing her powers in the open. She was panicking and tried to temper the seal but it seemed she was unable to even touch the seal. She could only transfer the seal to some other person but she could not use it for herself. Today she tried once again to go back to the mind palace to confront the beast. Looking at the beast lying in the same position he was previously. Taking a deep breath she exclaimed. Talk to me Kyubai. Chapter 53, Chapter 53, Mito's Shock. Talk to me Kyubai. Even after a long period of silence the fox did not budge nor opened its eyes. Mito grew frustrated but she felt powerless in front of the fox for the first time in her life. She spoke once again I know you can hear me and understand me very well, so open your eyes you damned beast. She exploded in anger, Uzumaki always had a short temper and she being the princess of Uzumaki clan could not handle someone ignoring her for so long. Snort. Karama snorted in response and opened his eyes, looking in those eyes Mito for the first time felt helpless and weak. Even when she fought against the fox years ago with her husband she did not feel this powerless. What do you want to talk about? The voice filled with contempt sent shivers down her spine. Ignoring the killing intent being directed at her she asked back, what happened to the seal? Why can't I use your power? Hearing the haughty tone of the woman in front of her Karama laughed out loud and his killing intent bursted towards her. You haven't even been here since you captured me aside from the time you needed my power. Now when you cannot use it you suddenly remember I can talk. Don't make me laugh human what can you humans even do to me? Karama got up from its position and looked in her eyes before responding. Do you think the likes of you can use my power if I do not allow you? Check the seals once again, so you think the trash you used can even be compared to the ones used here. Karama boasted while thinking. You dared to think that your seals can even be compared to my brothers, pitiful human. Mito felt her world shatter when she looked at the seals carefully she could not understand the seals. It was a completely different seal on a level she could not comprehend in her life. She tried to access it with her chakra carefully and all the functions of her original seals were there but she could not access them except for a few. She looked back at the fox looking at her with an amused expression on its face. She trembled and asked in a much lower tone. What do you want to do now? Walking back to its seat Karama laid down and replied. Nothing, I will not help you anymore. Why? She immediately asked back in frustration, without its power she would lose a huge portion of her power. Why? Because you humans disgust me, find me another host that can use my power. If I deem them useful I would lend them a bit of my strength, Karama emphasized on my especially to tell her that it was his power to begin with and what he will do with it is his choice. Even though you won't tell anyone this but don't tell anyone about the seal, even the next host. If you do, be ready to have a tailed beast on the loose in your village. Hearing the claims of the beast in front of her Mito did not reply instead left the space and opened her eyes. There was a little anger and frustration in her eyes but she composed herself when she sensed a familiar aura approaching the place. She walked back towards the main hall and saw a blur dashing towards her. She smiled and embraced the figure. Grandma, I missed you. Mito looked at her granddaughter and brushed her golden hair with love and care. She was none other than Tsunade the granddaughter of Hashirama Senju. Her beautiful oval face was enough to mesmerize anyone but her above average breasts enhanced her beauty even more. Did you recover from the injuries already, Tsuna? Mito asked while using her senses to scan her body. She sighed seeing she was back to her peak strength. Yes, Grandma. It was a minor injury, you were the one who was making a fuss over it. Tsunade replied and something crossed her mind. Grandma, where are the kids I saved in the war? Hearing her worry-filled voice Mito smiled and replied. I gave them a residence in the clan area, there were many houses that were empty and unoccupied now. Tsunade's face dropped a little as she remembered the death of her clan members. But she recovered soon and smiled. I will go check on them. She was about to go back but Mito stopped her. Wait. I will call them here, I need to meet them as well. Mito added and turned to look towards a servant present in the hall. Go call for them. The maid bowed and left the room to fulfill the orders. Mito looked back at Tsunade and asked, come tell me about your adventures. She walked towards her seat and Tsunade followed with sparkling eyes. She started to narrate her story of the war. When Sensei sent me on the mission we were still unsure but we still followed the orders. I really wanted to kill those teammates of mine, they are really unreliable. 
Anger flashed in her as she continued to berate how weird her teammates were, she went on until the doors of the hall opened once Angina and the maid entered the room with three little kids. There was a light blush on the maid's face. Tsunade ignored the maid and looked towards the kids following her. Mito was doing the same and their eyes widened a little seeing the appearance of the newcomers. Underscore 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 A slash N, I would love you to death if you could support me as a author on my account patreon.com slash oday aka. I have created a privileged section on Discord for the supporters, where you join to gain some spoil and sneak peek in future characters. For the rest of my fans who cannot afford to support me yet still want become a part of our community you can still join and share your fan images and theories with me there. I will see you there. Comment. 13 Comment. Vote. Chapter 54, Chapter 54, Meeting Tsunade Senju. In their new house Tsukimi was relaxing on the sofa in his short human form, beside his two little girls leaning on him, resting their head on his shoulder. This is how they generally spend their free time just feeling each other's presence was enough for them. Knock. But peaceful times did not last long, a loud knock o the door broke them out of their peaceful moment. Kokuo looked at the door with a slight frown. Tsukimi patted her head which eased the frown. Let me check. Tsukimi had already decided to refrain from using most of his powers while enjoying his time here in Kanaha. Where would be the fun in destroying everything with a sneeze? Walking towards the door Tsukimi could feel the weak presence on the other side of the door and realized what could be happening. So she finally decided to call for us. With that thought Tsukimi opened the door and looked at the woman standing on the other side of the door, her age was that of a middle-aged woman. Yet somehow her body was in the shape of a 20 to 30 year old. Tsukimi noticed that the maid froze seeing his appearance and decided to speak first. You are. Hearing his words the maid snapped out of her thoughts and shook her head to gain composure. She scanned the boy with her eyes, she did not notice that there was a slight blush on her face. I came here on the orders of Mito-sama, she wanted to see you three and Tsunade Haim is also waiting for you there. Tsukimai nodded and turned his gaze towards the sofa where both of his wives were sitting. The maid followed his gaze and her eyes widened in shock. What are these kids, they are more beautiful than all the cute and beautiful kids I have seen. They must be from some noble families. Come, let's go. Following his words both the girls got up and walked towards him. Please lead the way. The Tsukimi glazed at the maid and politely asked her to lead the way. The maid nodded and led them towards the main hall of the Senju clan. Soon they arrived in front of the huge gates, the maid walked inside the gate first and they followed after her. As soon as they entered the room, their eyes fell on the pair of granddaughter and grandmother talking with each other. Tsukimi watched as Mito turned her attention towards them hearing the sound of the gates being opened. She looked a little shocked before regaining her composure. Tsunade's eyes sparkled seeing their faces. She rushed to hug Tsukimi only to have face slammed to the floor. Tsukimi did not like anyone other than his wives touching him or coming close to him, that was the reason he dodged to the side. Mito narrowed her eyes seeing him dodge Tsunade's speed. Even though she was not using her chakra her speed was way faster than normal civilians can see. Tsunade got up from the ground with an annoyed expression on her face. Tsukimi looked at her coldly and asked. Can you not touch me? Tsunade raised her eyebrows and she felt two killing intents which alerted her from the girls beside the boy. I do not like strangers touching me. I hope you understand that. Brat, is this how you repay someone who saved your lives? Tsunade grumbled in frustration, she was annoyed being treated this way. This was the first time she was treated this way by someone. Now now, don't make the kids uncomfortable Tsuna. Mito interjected in the conversation before things could escalate further. She looked at the two girls before looking back at the boy in the front and asked, What are you names kids? Ignoring the pouting face of Tsunade, Tsukimi replied. My name is Akiyako, turning towards the girl he introduced to them as well, these are my little sisters, Asami and Haruki. Mito raised her eyes at his manners and just like the maid she thought that they were from noble families as well. Do you have a family name as well? Atsutsuki. Much to Kokuo and Matadabi's surprise, Tsukimi chose the surname they thought he hated the most. On the other hand Mito tried hard to remember if she had heard the surname anywhere but she could not remember anything. Everyone remembered Hago Romo as the Sage of Six Paths not with his real name so it was understandable that she does not know it. She looked at him and nodded before continuing the conversation. 
Have you decided what you will do with your lives? She tried to probe their attention for the future. She was not surprised by the rare display of maturity in their eyes. Wars do many things to kids, she knew it firsthand and so she did not take their behavior to heart. I will join Ninja Academy for now, we will take care of the expenses ourselves and even pay for the place you are letting her stay. Tsukimi replied in a neutral tone, like he was talking to someone with an equal position to him. It seemed to annoy Tsunade but she did not dare to interfere in her grandmother's conversation and quietly listened till now. She wanted to teach the boy a lesson and hearing the response she thought it was a perfect opportunity to bea a him teach him. Who better to teach him than the student of the Hokage himself? Since you want to become a ninja I will teach you brats myself. She declared with a grin on her face looking at the kids. She waited for them to beg her to teach them before she could begin her training. Hee hee what a perfect plan. Mito shook her head seeing the grinning face of her granddaughter, she knew what was going on inside her mind. She looked towards the kids waiting for their decision but to her surprise the boy chose to decline. I thank you for your offer but I have to decline. Chapter 55, Chapter 55, Fighting Against Tsunade I thank you for your offer but I have to decline. Of course you would accept what? You decline? Do you know who I am? She screamed as she realized that she was rejected and thought they must not know about her. Of course I know who you are. You are granddaughter of the first Hokage Hashirama Senju and the princess of the Uzumaki clan Mito Uzumaki. Also you are the student of the current Hokage and a Jonin ninja. Hearing Tsukimi's plain tone Tsunade's expression twitched and Mito narrowed her eyes, she was surprised that someone rejected her granddaughter even after knowing her identity. She also noticed that he introduced her as the Uzumaki princess but chose to brush it off. Why then? If you know who I am, why are you rejecting me? Tsunade asked in frustration. Even her chakra leaked a little. Well you are weak and do you think I cannot see through your true intentions? Do you think I am a child? Tsukimi thought while maintaining calm composure on the outside as he replied. I do not want to feel indebted to you, you have already done more than enough saving us in the war. Before Tsunade could reply Tsukimi looked at Mito and asked. Can you tell us when the academy will start so we can join as well? Mito looked back at him with an amused expression on her face, Tsunade was fuming in anger. She wanted to smash her fist in the boy's head but she was unable to act because of the presence of her grandmother. Although the academy has started, I can help you join it if you have anything special about yourselves. Mito glanced at the three kids before replying. Her meaning was simple, if they were worthy enough she could let them join even though they are past the date of joining. She just wants to test the kids, how powerful they are and what secrets they have. Tsukimi raised eyebrows hearing her response and realized what she was planning. I should join now so that I can meet the promising kids of the clans. They might have something amusing that might catch my eye. Tsukimi thought about his future host while making a decision. He did not want to just blindly follow the knowledge of the anime to get himself a host. We have strong bodies, I can sense everything around me. Tsukimi replied while choosing some basic abilities as a cover. He can use all types of bloodline limits but he did not want to show that to anyone. He was too lazy to deal with someone like Danzo on his ass. Yet a strong body alone was not enough to catch Mito's interest so he added that he was a sensor too. Mito got curious and asked back, have you ever used your chakra before? How far can you sense? Tsunade was also intrigued hearing his response, sensor type ninja were rare and those with strong bodies were even rare. She did not even believe that he had a strong body, she just thought how strong a thin kid's body would be. Tsukimi replied calmly, even though we have awakened our chakra we haven't used it besides some basic practice. I can sense around the 10 meter radius currently. Tsukimi's reply caught Mito off guard. After all the radius of a 10 meter was not something to scoff at that too for someone who is not even a genin. Thinking of his words as baseless boasting, Tsunade could not take it anymore and decided to interject. Kid, it's not good to lie. Let me test if you truly have a good body. Hearing her words Mito paused and thought it was good to test them. What do you think? She asked the boy thinking he might back down but to her surprise he nodded. Let's go outside, you three can attack me together. Seeing him nod, Tsunade happily walked towards the training grounds while instructing. Mito also followed to watch in on the fun. In the Senjo training grounds, three small figures stood facing Tsunade. She looked at them while telling them the rules of the spar. You three can come at me and land a hit on me. Seeing the blank look her grandmother was giving her at her shameless act she coughed and added. I will only use genin level power and no techniques. 
she sighed seeing the look on Mito's face disappear. You can start any time. Tsunade declared and Tsukimi did not move from his place and looked at the girls beside him. Don't kill her. Tsukimi sent a mental message to them to which they snorted. They really wanted to kill her during this match. Tsukimi sighed and added, just use the power of a civilian and make it look like you are going all out. They did not need to use extra power because Tsukimi knew they would not have the difficulty of controlling their strength. In the beginning of their control training he has been teaching them how to control their strength using eggs. Yes eggs, the most delicate things they can hold without breaking, is the best form of training for them. Although it took them many time of trial and error, they finally can use the power of a normal human to some extent but their bodies are still stronger than every human being out there. If you are done with your talking, come at me. Seeing them not moving, Tsunade did not rush things and decided to let them do whatever they wanted. But her patience was running low. Tsukimi nodded at his girls and they dashed at the woman from all the sides to attack her. Tsunade was surprised to see their speed was comparable to some low-level genins. Her expression was still playful as she dodged the girls' attacks while keeping an eye on Tsukimi. To her surprise the girls were not only fast but also were skilled in fighting. Matatabi used her small figure to twist and change the direction of her attack. This caused a slight distraction to appear in her mind and Tsukimi took this chance to strike her in the stomach. Tsunade got aware of the attack but she could not dodge it without using power greater than Genin. Boom. Chapter 56, Chapter 56, Nawaki is blushing. Tsukimi's fist was not the only thing targeting Tsunade, Kokuo and Matatabi also launched their kicks to attack the woman. They have been trained by Tsukimi to gain combat experience, going against the likes of a Jonin ninja was a walk in the park for them. Tsunade looked at the attack from all directions, seemingly annoyed and used her chakra strength. With chakra enhancing her strength, Tsunade slammed her fist into the ground. Boom! The ground cracked, Tsunade wanted to use this tactic to make them lose their balance. She did not use any techniques on the trio so she thought it was fair play. Mito's lips twitched seeing her granddaughter destroying their property without any care in the world. She looked at the kids worried that they might get injured. But to both her and Tsunade's surprise the trio were fine and even did not have trouble adapting to the changes in their surroundings. In her shock state Tsukimi punched Tsu and this time he managed to make her defend herself using her hands. She was in a trance seeing her tactics fail for the first time. After seeing his attack connecting, Tsukimi along with the girls backed away from Tsunade, puzzling her. It's their win. Realization dawned on her when Mito declared that the trio won. Wait. I got distracted. Let's go another round. Tsunade exclaimed in anger looking at the kids, she paid for underestimating the kids. Tsunade. You seem to have forgotten that even a moment of hesitation can cost you your life on the battlefield. Mito. Reprimanded her granddaughter, you were the one who placed the rule that if they managed to touch you they would win and they did. Tsunade lowered her head in shame, Mito turned to look at the kids and added. Starting next week you three will be joining the academy along with the rest of the students. Tsukimi along with the girls nodded in acceptance before they continued their talk. A set of hurried footsteps interrupted their talk. Grandma. A small boy around the age of ten ran towards Mito who smiled at the sight of her grandson. Tsukimi narrowed his eyes slightly before they returned to normal. Nawaki, how was your day at academy? Mito asked. The boy hugging Mito, was grandson of Hashirama Senju Nawaki Senu. According to the plot he died on the battlefield, it seemed he was assassinated during the war. Nawaki felt other people's presence in the courtyard and looked at them. His eyes widened and his cheeks blushed at the sight of the Kokuo and Matatabi. He then caught the sight of Tsukimi looking at him with an expressionless face which seemed to scare him a little. Seeing the flustered appearance of her brother, Tsunade smirked and got near them to tease him. Oh my, what is this? Nawaki is blushing. Hee <laughs> hee. Hearing Tsuan's words Mito also laughed seeing the blush intensify on the boy's face. Tsukimi, unamused by the situation chose to retire. If there is nothing else, we would like to take a rest. Tsukimi asked Mito who looked back at him before replying. Why don't you have lunch with us? It's almost time. Tsukimi shook his head in response while adding. I would have loved to but we are very tired at the moment and just want to rest but we will definitely join you some other time. Hearing the reply Mito saw their exhausted look which was nothing but the work of Tsukimi's illusion and nodded in agreement. After they walked back towards the direction of their rooms, Nawaka looked at Mito and asked. B.A.H.N., who are they? Mito patted the head of her grandson while replying. 
They are the orphans that your sister saved during her time on the front lines and they will be living in the Senjo compound. Hearing her response, Naweka smiled a little. Tsunade and Mito naturally saw this change. It seems Naweka is eager to meet them, he might even look at them during his time in the academy. Tsunade did not leave the changes to tease her brother which caused another blush to appear on her face but her later words caused his interest. Mito also joined in on her teasing. That might be true, after all they are also joining the same class as him starting next week. Naweka's ears perked up hearing this information he looked at Mito and asked her. When are you going to teach me B.A.H.N., I want to grow stronger and become the Hokage. Hearing his declaration, Mito's expression turned complicated. She knew how thorny the road of becoming the Hokage was. She did not want to lose another precious member of her family to that cursed seat. It was also the reason she deliberately tried to slow his training down. Tsunade seemed to be unaware of her internal struggle, she looked at her brother and exclaimed. Come spar with me, let me teach you how Aro fight. Before Naweka could protest, Tsunade picked him up by the collar and took him to the training field. She threw him on the ground and started beating a ham training him. She was frustrated from the previous fight with Akiko and his siblings. She just wanted to vent that frustration on somebody. Naweka just happened to be that somebody. On their way back to their house Tsukimi and the girl were having a different kind of talk. Brother, I do not like that kid, should I kill him? Kokuo asked in a plain voice but the killing intent was shimmering inside her eyes. Matatabi also agreed with her sister, she did not like anyone else but Tsukimi look at her with those eyes. No need to be so hasty. You can always teach him a lesson in the class and if he dares to go overboard I will personally send him off. Tsukimi's suggestion seemed to make their eyes sparkle, he sighed and prayed for the poor boy hoping he would survive this. Bullshit, like hell he would think that. Chapter 57, Chapter 57, Another H.A.G.O. Romo Few days went by and the trio got adjusted to their new environment. They have been roaming around in the area to find something that would catch their eyes. During this time the current Hokage summoned them to take a look at them. A day before. In a small room filled with the smell of paper and tobacco, a middle-aged man was going through some papers while grumbling about being too old. He was the current Hokage of the Kanaha village. His name was Saratobi Hiruzen, student of late second Hokage Tobirama Senju. In the middle of his work Hiruzen was interrupted by a knock on the door. Knock knock. He was elated that he would not have to do the paperwork anymore. Suppressing his excitement with a light cough he gave the order to enter. Enter. He saw something that caused him to raise his eyebrows. In front of him were three kids, one boy, and two girls. He was surprised to see the appearance of the girls, they were even more beautiful than any girl he had ever seen in his life. He turned his attention towards the boy, the reason he raised his eyebrow. The boy was wearing a mask covering half of his face but he was able to see his eyes and forehead clearly. He could tell that the boy was handsome just from his eyes. Tsukimi looked at the current Hokage with contempt hidden in his eyes. Just like H.A.G.O. Romo. With a single glance Tsukimi could see through his kind elder persona. He does not even need to speak with him. You know what kind of person he was. You must be a Kiyako. These beautiful little girls must be Asami and Haruki. Hiruzen started the conversation with a polite smile on his face to only receive a plain reply from the kids. Indeed Hokage-sama, I have been told that you wanted to see us. Hiruzen's lips twitched at their response but he did not take it to heart and replied. I heard from Mito-sama that she wanted to apply for some genius siblings in the academy, so I was curious. Now looking at the three of you I can tell you are indeed geniuses. He chuckled while speaking, since they only allowed him to see their chunin level chakra Hiruzen thought of them as geniuses. But that was not the only reason the other reason was the way they carried themselves, from the way they walked he could tell they were trained. He would have thought of them as spies in normal circumstances but he had investigated their background which told them they were clean. Well he thought he did but it was all the illusion that Tsukimi planted inside their mind and Mito's vouching helped them even further. Hearing the praised Tsukimi just nodded in response while the girl did not even show any kind of reaction. Hiruzen's lips twitched once again and he changed the topic. Never in his life did he had a straining conversation. Now he wanted to go back to his papers more than talking. What are your plans after becoming a ninja? He got to the point seeing no point in beating around the bush. Well, I will become an instructor at the academy if everything goes well. They have not decided yet. Hiruzen was puzzled hearing his response, most of the kids would love to go to the battlefield and display their will of fire but then he realized they were not from this village thus they did not have the will of fire. 
why don't you choose carefully? After all it's about your future, your whole life will depend on it. He tried to persuade them but Tsukimi did not budge. What future did he need? He could create all the money he needed with a snap of his finger. How about we leave that to the future? Seeing that the old man was being stubborn to let them join the ninja of his ranks, Tsukimi suggested. Hiruzen sighed in defeat and agreed to his suggestion. Let's decide after you graduate. Tomorrow is the day you will join the classes, be sure to arrive on time and take this. Taking an envelope out of the drawer, he handed it to Tsukimi and added, This is your acceptance letter and you can show this to the gatekeeper and then at the reception she will guide you to your class. Taking the letter, Tsukimi stored it in his robes. He waited for further instructions and hers and dismissed them. You can leave now, I hope you work hard and become a renowned ninja of Kanaha. Take this book as well. Tsukimi took the book out of curiosity to read the title which was Will of Fire. Raising an eyebrow he kept the book and took his leave after walking out of the Hokage office Matatabi got curious about the book and asked what was written inside it. Tsukimi was curious about the book and Will of Fire and started reading the book. With a swift flip he finished reading the book in a few seconds. His face turned colder and colder with each page he flipped through. Without saying anything he slammed the book close and burned it with his chakra. What was in the book? Kokuo asked, feeling disgust radiating off of him. Tsukimi looked back at them and sighed. With a snap of his fingers information about the book flashed through their minds and they understood what made him feel that way. The book was plainly a tool to manipulate the kids it was filled with brainwashing material. How it was great to sacrifice themselves for the good of the village. For the greater good. Somehow it reminded them of H.A.G.O. Romo. It was no wonder Tsukimi showed that much disgust, he hated people like that. Ignoring the shocked and curious gaze of everyone, they made their way back home. End of flashback. Chapter 58, Chapter 58, First Day at Academy. Get back in your seats. A man shouted at the kids in front of him. Oi, you brats. Don't make me repeat myself. He had black hair which was tied at the back of his head, he was wearing a standard ninja outfit along with the Kanaha headband, he was the current teacher of this class. Seeing that there were children who still did not pay attention to him, his face twitched and he released a bit of his killing intent. Feeling the ominous aura coming from their teacher, everyone ran back to their seats. Although they were a new batch of students and did not know what their teacher was capable of, they already started fearing his wrath from the first day. I will be taking attendance now, if any of you dared to make a noise, I will make sure your sparring opponent is me. The warning seemed to work as many of these kids did not even dare to breathe. While the attendance was going on Tsukimi stood in front of the receptionist, behind him Kokuo and Matatabi stood patiently. The receptionist was caught off guard suddenly seeing two beautiful kids in the academy but when the masked boy in front of him handed the acceptance letter signed by Hokage she professionally handled the matter. Follow me, I will escort you three to your class. Your teacher is also in the class. He should be taking attendance. The receptionist got up from her seat and walked towards the hallway leading them to their classes. Your teacher's name is Akira. He is strict with his teaching so be sure to behave properly in front of him. Along the way she advised them about the classes and how they should act in the class. Before long they stood in front of a classroom. They could hear the voice of the teacher coming from inside as they looked at the closed door. Wait here let me go inside first, I will call you three later. The woman walked inside the door and the teacher stopped talking. After a while Tsukimi heard the receptionist asking them to come inside. As soon as they walked in all the eyes turned towards them, boys started blushing at the sight of their new beautiful classmates. When their eyes fell on the masked boy their expression turned weird. Tsukimi still was wearing the mask he wore yesterday. If his mask was weird his golden hair with silver strands captivated everyone's eyes. His golden eyes matched the color of his hair and contained a red hue to them. Who would wear a mask in broad daylight? Some boy looked at him with jealousy and hate for being able to stand beside such beautiful girls. Girl got attracted to his hair and eyes. They had never seen such beautiful hair on anyone. Those eyes were even more beautiful than the rumored Sharingan or Byakugan. Tsukimi ignored all of their eyes, he might as well kill all of the humans if he wanted them to stop looking at them with such eyes. The kids started talking among themselves which irked the teacher. Silence. Seeing everyone stop talking. These are your new classmates. Go ahead and introduce yourself. The teacher decided not to reveal that they were saved during war because the Hokage instructed him in the letter given by Tsukimi to him. My name is Akiyako Atsutsuki, that's all you need to know. 
His cold and ethereal voice struck a chord with many little girls. Kia what a beautiful voice. I bet he is handsome behind that mask. I might become his beautiful fangirl if this goes on. You beautiful? Bah! Look in the mirror. The Chunin teacher Akira had a headache seeing the commotion the new kids have caused. Tsukimi ignored their wishful eyes. It was now Matatabi's turn to introduce so she walked a step forward before introducing herself. Haruki Atsutsuki. Just after her, Kokuo introduced herself. Asami. Hearing the plain introduction from the new students, Akira's lips twitched as he sighed. What kind of EMO kids have I got? Hokage-sama, this job might really kill me. How can I show my will to fire like this? The boys in the room were thrilled realizing they were just siblings and they could still have a chance with the girls. What they did not know was that let alone being blood-related these siblings did not even have blood inside them. Tsukimi could more or less guess their thoughts but did not pay them any attention. He turned to look at Akira for further instructions. Sai go take an empty seat. Nodding Tsukimi looked at the seats and saw that there were not many empty seats but there was a seat with a single girl sitting on it. She seemed like a loner and Tsukimi could see that there was enough room for three more kids beside her. Walking towards her, Tsukimi silently took the seat and Kokuo sat on his left side and Matatabi sat on his right. The girl looked at Tsukimi with a blushed face before looking back down. Even though she was being fast with her actions Tsukimi saw her eyes. Byakugan, Ahaiga. Glancing at her bloodline for a while, Tsukimi looked back at the teacher who had already resumed the class. The time went by and the class came to an end. All the teacher talked about was the history of Kanaha and the previous Hokages. It's time for your Teijutsu class, follow me. Following the teacher's words everyone walked out of the room. Tsukimi could feel many negative intent eyes on him. Feeling the gaze he thought how pitiful these kids were. They were not even ten years old and they wanted to challenge him, the ten tails whom even most of the Atsutsukis feared to confront. Smirking under the mask he walked out of the room along with everyone. Chapter 59 Chapter 59, Defeating Human Kids A slash N, Tsukimi is starting in the first year academy. Don't worry I won't show the academy nonsense. I just want him to build some relations with humans. Be it friendship, hatred, or anything. If he stays holed up in the dimension, I might as well end the fanfiction in the next chapter. So where was I, Ya Academy? He is in the same year as Minato. I have also added some of the family heirs in the class despite what timeline they were in the original. Nawaki is in second year and he is nine years old currently. There won't be any forced friendships and relationships. If you find any difficulties or problems with the plot leave a comment or join my discord to provide your suggestions. Under the heat of the shining sun, all the first year students were now standing in the training grounds where they would be fighting against each other to test the Teijutsu mastery. Akira turned to look at Tsukimi and asked Akiko. Have you all trained in Teijutsu or do you want to sit this one out? No need to worry, we have all been training in Teijutsu since way before. Akira did mind his cold words and nodded before walking in the middle of the stage. I will take the names, come according to your turn and fight. He looked at the eager eyes of the boy. They have been wanting to teach the boy named Akiko a lesson. This might be a good lesson for these brats. That boy is not someone to take lightly. He was secretly informed by the Hokage that the boy could compete with Genins in a fight. I think he is a sensor too. Pushing his thought at the back of his mind Akira announced the name of the first pair to fight. Aoi and Nami Kaze Minato. Hearing the name Tsukimi turned his attention towards the blonde boy who was walking towards the stage. His aura was quite calm and his hands were full of clauses. Tsukimi smiled a little seeing the amount of effort this boy seemed to have put in his training but he knew that such people were easy to manipulate by the likes of Hago Romo and Hiruzen. When both the boys stood face to face with each other Akira announced. Make a sign of confrontation. Seeing both the boys making the half-tiger seal, Akira backed away. Begin. Minato rushed in and did not give his opponent the time to react. He was quite fast for the kids his age and even some above his age. Appearing in front of the boy, Minato used his palm to strike the opponent in his stomach. After the boy fell TK the ground Minato placed his finger across his neck and the match came to an end. After forming the seals of reconciliation, they both stepped out of the ring. As if feeling a pair of eyes on him Minato looked in Tsukimi direction and their eyes met. Minato smiled a little in return to which Tsukimi nodded back. A few more matches went by and now it was Tsukimi's turn, his opponent was. Akiko and Ren Uchiha. Ren was a member of the Uchiha clan. 
He may not be as talented as Fyukagub but he was still quite talented himself. He had already learned the basic Taijutsu techniques of his clan that all the kids learn after they enter the academy. Ren stood in front of Tsukimi and formed the seal of confrontation, despite his distaste of hand signs Tsukimi also formed the seal. Begin. As all the boys of the class watched in anticipation of Tsukimi being beaten by Ren. They even started cheering when Ren charged ahead at the boy with full speed. Go Ren, teach him who is the boss. Yet, yeah, make the boy feel despair. Take all of arrogance out of him. Ren was smirking as he arrived in front of Tsukimi, who did not move an inch from the start. Ren thought since he was not moving he must have been frozen in fear. Used his palm to jab at Tsukimi's chin. Without giving his attack a single glance Tsukimi caught his hand by his wrist and kept looking him in the eye. What an arrogant human. He could see the arrogance flaring in the eyes of a boy and it did not generate from the bloodline, it was merely amplified by it. Snort. Tsukimi did not speak anything and just kicked him so hard that he flew backwards. Winner Akiyako, form sign of reconciliation. Tsukimi formed the seal and walked back as the rest of the boys looked at him with fear and a little admiration. Ran stood up in a staggered manner and looked at Tsukimi's back with a hateful gaze. Grinding his teeth he moved towards the rest of the boys. Even though he got beaten, some of his fang girls looked at him with a worried gaze. Meanwhile Tsukimi also got many girls admiring him. Minato and the girls were the only ones admiring him though, the rest of the boys only felt fear towards him. The person who could beat one of the strong boys with a single kick was not someone they could dare to go against. Now it's the girl's turn. Akira announced plainly, writing down the scores and ignoring the fang girls making a commotion. Kia did you see how dreamy he was? I really want to see his face. Tsukimi ignored the girls and walked towards an empty area. Matatabi and Kokuo were on the girls' side waiting for their turn. Congratulations on your win. Hearing the words Tsukimi turned to look at the source who approached him. Chapter 60, Chapter 60, Uchiha vs Hayaga. These puny humans don't know their place. Matatabi mumbled under her breath watching most of the boys wanting to teach Tsukimi a lesson, she felt like destroying the whole academy just because these ants dared to look down on her brother. Kokuo just shook her head while saying, I know what you are feeling but we cannot make a move and brother wants to find a human to nurture. Her voice was as stoic as ever but Matatabi could feel her hidden emotion through their link with Tsukimi. She looked at all the students present and mumbled, do they even have someone that could attract our brother's attention? She could not find anyone with a passable bloodline, even Hashirama's bloodline was only enough for them to give that boy some pointers. Brother doesn't care about bloodline, Kokuo saw her brother defeating the Uchiha with a single move. He said as long as their character aligns with his own he will take that person as his potential host. What we need to do right now is get stronger and enjoy life with our brother. Kokuo's last sentence made Matatabi sigh as a smile graced her small face. She turned to look at Tsukimi who was now sitting alone and saw someone approaching him with a smile on his face. You are right, let's just hope that none of these humans get in our way. A slash N, is that a flag? Now it's girl's turn. Get ready the voice of the instructor caused them to look back at the stage. Meanwhile Tsukimi looked at the blonde haired boy in front of him smiling at him warmly. Congratulations on your win. His smile did not fade away as he congratulated him on his win. Tsukimi nodded back without saying anything. He was surprised by the sudden visit from Minato. My name is Minato Namikaze. Nice to meet you. Tsukimi looked at him for a moment before replying Akiyako Atsu Tsuki. He was not trying to be arrogant or anything but the fact that he hated kids resurfaced in the presence of so many kids. He was getting annoyed by their behavior. I haven't seen you here before, did you come from another village? Minata sat beside him and asked with a curious expression on his face. My village was destroyed before we were saved by Kanaha's ninja so we will live here. Tsukimi replied without any change in expressions, like the disappearance of the village did not matter to him. Minato was shocked hearing those words and immediately apologized. I am sorry, it was insensitive of me to ask such a question. Tsukimi shook his head without looking at him. It doesn't matter to me. As long as they are with me I am happy enough. Tsukimi replied but this time he was serious about his words. Minato followed his gaze and saw him looking at the two beautiful girl that joined the class alongside him. Minato was curious about their relationship which seemed to be something more than normal siblings but he decided not to ask anything personal. They weren't even friends so asking for such information was pointless. While they continued to talk with each other boys started talking among themselves while looking in their direction. What is that Minato doing, 
acting all friendly with that weird boy. He must have felt pity for him, I think they are both commoners. Hearing those words the rest nodded in agreement as they believed that Minato must have seeked friendship with a fellow commoner. Pay attention. The sharp voice of the teacher caused them to tremble and look at the stage where two girls faced each other. A match had already taken place which they seemed to have missed because of their talking. Fortunately for them it was a simple match between weak kids, they did not even use proper taijutsu to fight and finished the match early. Standing against each other the two girls looked at each other. One of the girls was none other than the girl who was sitting beside Tsukimi. She seemed to be from Hayagavi Lan and the one in front of her was wearing the outfit of the Uchiha clan. Hayagahanami and Uchiha Mikato make your seal of confrontation. Following the instructions of their teacher they formed the seals in front of their chest while looking at each other. Akira backed away and yelled. Begin. Both the girls charged at each other at a very fast pace. Mikato attacked the girl in front of her with a palm strike. Before her palm strike was about to touch her, Hanami used her own palm strike to deflect the attack. She was using the Taijutsu style of the Hayaga clan that was taught to everyone in the clan. The hair which slightly covered the forehead area brushed past her face revealing veins popping out beside her eyes. Her eyes seemed to be more focused as she looked at the girl in front of her with a serious face unlike her usual shy self. Byakugan. Tsukimi muttered looking at the familiar eyes in front of him. A face of white-haired beauty came to his mind as he shook his head. He looked back at the stage and watched the match proceed. Mikato's face turned serious as she charged straight up. She knew she had to take it seriously because her opponent had activated Byakugan and she has yet to awaken Sharingan. Mikato used Taijutsu to keep attacking Hanami from all sides, which Hanami kept dodging without any difficulty. With her Byakugan she could see the moments of Chakra. I need to find a weakness. Mikato thought while analyzing her opponent. Thanks for listening.